Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Paul. Paul. Paul is here. Again. That's right. Thumbs up to Paul. So, Paul, we have a new manager with new ways of doing things, new outlook. Uh, and the, the vibe that everyone is, is pushing is that not just our manager, but our director of football is really going to try to bring players up through the ranks and to give youth a chance. Play the kids. That's, that's what everyone is saying. One of the kids who was given some opportunities last season, who has always stood out, stood out for several years for the, uh, for the U23s, I remember he played for, I think it was the Dallas Cup team, the team that won the Dallas yeah. Cup uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, U18s, yeah, I think. Yeah. 16. Yeah, I remember. I watched those games. They played them on TV here. It was crazy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the guy I'm talking about is uh, Benny Boningami. Boningami. Benny, we're just going to call him Benny. That's, what, that's what's going to happen. Benny. All right? Yeah. So, um, Benny's 19 years old, and he got some opportunities to play last season, and he looked pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, it's sort of an Adrissa Gay style, you know, plays similar similar position, center mid, center defensive mid, uh, kind of goes around and kind of wreaks havoc and distributes. And uh, I would almost say his passing is is about as good or better than Adrissa Gay's. Um, he may not, I don't know, uh, who knows if he's got the durability, uh, but he is younger, so he's going to be a little more naive. Um, I think he's perfect cover for Adrissa Gay. And I think it would be a really good idea to keep him in the squad. However, yeah. you never know. So, what do you think about Benny's chances of being in the first team setup? And uh, do you think he'll get some time this season? I think it will depend on what Silva decides to do. I mean, we, t- we touched on it previously. If Silva decides to play Sigurdsson alongside a Schneidlin and another sign of forward thinking player, then. I dress up Garner Gay himself will find it hard to get in the team. So That's I, true. I don't. Any player, if, if I dress up Garner Gay is going to have his game time limited, then any player who's going to be cover for him is going to have his time even less limited. I mean, I, I like Benningamy. I mean, he's a Unsworth darling. He, he, when Unsworth had his interim spell, he was basically what the, the him and John Joe Kenny were the players who came straight into the first team straight yeah. away. They got a lot of game time, whereas Ronald Koeman just did not give them the time of day. I doubt Ronald Koeman even knew who they were. So when he came in, he, you know, he, he looked like he, this was at a really bad time of the season as well. He looked like he really played for the shirt, like he had a lot of passion, that he really had a point to prove, that he had lots of energy to spend. So it was a bre- real breath of fresh air when he came into the team. Now, obviously, when Allardyce took over, he was kind of fell back into the shadows again. And then in the last few months, few weeks of the season, he kind of got a few cameos here and there. He sort of came back a little bit. So, He's clearly at the forefront of the of the manager's thinking. They are aware of him. There are some players like Klasan and players like that who just get completely discarded and the manager just pretends like they're not even here, which wasn't the case with Beningami. I mean, it, we have seen players in the past for, for Everton and for other teams where they are the favourites of one manager. As soon as that manager leaves, um, that player, we never, we never hear from them again. They just mm-hmm. drop straight back down to the reserves or they go out on loan or they... They are just left to rot, basically. So, mm. Beningami, I would like to see Beningami get some game time, but if Adrissa Garner Gay himself is not going to get much game time next season, which we don't know, we, we have to wait and see what Silver plans to do, then I think a lone eye for the Beningami is not the worst idea in the world. I think mm. telling Beningami to go out, get 30 games a season minimum under his belt in a team that is ideally set up similar to how Silver wants to set us up, I think that may be a good idea, but but Ingemi, at this stage of his career, he just needs games. If he can get 15, 20 games here next season, or coming off the bench and playing a cup game or a midweek game when we just need some freshness, then great. Keep him around, mm. let him learn, have a dress again, game, mentor him and kind of mould him. But if it's going to be a case of where he's just going to be a not even a spare part, he's just going to be a guy who's just put in the cupboard, we don't see him hardly ever then alone is the best idea just mm. get the guy some game time that is what's most crucial but he has to get up minutes on the pitch he has to learn and there's only so much he's going to learn when he is not on the field so just get him on the field to play so if he does go out on loan i'd like to see him go to a team that is very similar to how we're going to set up and of a similar level maybe a premier league team top championship team i, I don't see 
I don't see the use of sending him to a, a League Two team. I think a strong championship team. That's where if we're going to loan some of these guys that are on the cusp, if we for some reason loan Dowell again, uh, ben- Beningami, uh, uh, if we loan uh, you know DCL, these need to be to teams that are competing for promotion next season in the championship. I stand by a, a, a lone move to the championship. I really do. Because I think they go from having potential to marrying it with the physicality that the championship gives you. Like, that's one of the things that a lot of these kids don't have yet, you know? Because you get, you get, I keep on saying it, carved out of wood, like in Fight Club. You go to the championship, you get carved out of wood because you play so many games and it's so physical. You know, it's a different type of physicality. So if it's going to if, it, if it's going to make them come out a little bit more mature and more, uh, I don't know, mentally ready, mentally strong, and physically strong, I yeah. think pushing those kids to the championship is a great thing. But yeah. you also think about the fact that the rumors are that we're only going to bring in about four players. You know what I mean? So if we bring in four players, center back, left back, maybe a center mid, and maybe a winger. Mm. So maybe a maybe a striker. You know, maybe a, a yeah. the, the funny thing is, I feel like if you and I were to list our weaknesses, we'd have more than four. We would need about seven players if we really were listing what we need. But they're trying to keep it down from what. We and you know what people may be wrong, you know what I mean. But they're wanting to have a squad of about twenty-five players. So that's if you take every single position and put a backup for that position, that's twenty-two already. And then you got to have more than one striker backup. So one of those three players in the squad is a striker. So one of the, and then the others. I mean, where where are the other two going to be? What are they? So yeah, I that's just who knows what we're going to do with these players. You know, uh, I I don't know. I like the idea of having him occupy a spot on our squad. I think he's a good player. If we plan on yeah. having a Ghana Gay type of role for our squad, Beningby needs to be here to cover that, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but if Silva's not running that style the way you said, we could definitely see him go out on loan. I could see that happen. Yeah, so, definitely. You're right. It's up to Silva. How does he want to do it? I don't know. I'm oddly confident with the guy, though. For some reason, I've been very comfortable with Silva lately. When I think about the fact that him going in and with bronze, I don't know that team. I'm just like, ah, I'm I'm okay. And I don't even mind that we're taking so long to buy players. I'm okay with it. We, I, the other day, we got our first visual of Silva wearing the training gear, the season's training gear, and it was a great. It was he looked absolutely beautiful. He looked like, like he was wearing a pair of Copas. Uh, yeah. I was like, yes! It's like yeah. proper football boots. That's nice. I can't wait to see what he wears um, because we always traditionally have... I mean, during pre-season, the, play, the, the manager just seems to you know wear the training gear, the shorts, the yeah. socks, the, the, the sweatshirt. For the final pre-season game of the season, which is always at Goodison Park, where we kind of get a big-name team over, mm-hmm. the manager always puts his suit on, he looks smart. Because there's going to be a big crowd there. I can't wait to see the outfit he rocks at Goodison in August when we play. I believe it is... The name escapes me. I think we booked a game in for Goodison. But Valencia? We, we always play one every season. It's Valencia, Valencia, right? Yeah, it's Valencia. We always book a game in the first week of August, just before pre-season. And the manager always looks dapper. And I can't wait to see what Marco Silva pulls out for us. It's a pretty legit preseason too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Lille, Porto, Valencia. These are... These are good squads. <laughs> These are yeah. teams that actually have some quality players. I, I I like this. I so far I'm I'm on board. I don't have a lot of complaints mm. this season yet. Yet. Not yet. 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 <laughs> All right. So anything else on Benny? On Benny, mm, the only thing I think is worth mentioning is if he does go out on loan to a Premier League club, which is possible. I mean. I don't want him going to a team where the manager's going to change mid-season. I think that is very detrimental to a young player who's on loan. And it, it, it happens. Clubs get into trouble. They're right down the bottom. The manager's changed. The club's in turmoil. That is the last thing a young kid like him needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, players who've got on loan, they need to just be at a stable club. 
where they're either going to come up or they're just going to finish just below the... They're, they're, they're going to be safe. They're not going to end the season in total disaster. Yes. I don't want a player who just... He's, he's thrown in the deep end. The club's in trouble. The atmosphere around the ground, around the stadium is terrible. The manager's out the door. You know, somewhere like a Swansea. That's a good example. I don't want to see him rock up at a Swansea mm-hmm. or like a Crystal Palace last season where the whole club was just in turmoil. I actually don't season. think that he'll go the last to thing. Premier League. I just don't no. see it happening. I don't know why. I don't. I, 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 yeah. I think we yeah. think more of him than those teams would. You know what I mean? True. True. So, so uh, it's in Benny. Yeah, to sum up, there's a place for him in our squad, but only if he's guaranteed to get time. If he's not going to play a dozen, a dozen at least games this se- for us this season, then he needs to go on loan because he needs game time. He needs time on the pitch to develop and to get minutes. And particularly with his style as well, because he's a presser, a presser we feel that players like that they need to be active. That they can't just be playing one ninety minutes one week, then out yeah. out the next week. They have to get a run of games before they get fit. Yeah. So I want to see a lot before bringing him. I've got, I think, high hopes for him. He's got a bright future, but let's just get him on the pitch, playing and develop him. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. So that's uh, that's it for uh, our Benny segment. It's very possible he's got going to have some first team minutes coming up. More than last season, one would think. So, I. Uh, that is it for that segment. It's also it for the big show. Podcasters out there, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues podcast. Rate it if you can. And if, you, if you're feeling super sweet, leave us a nice review. That would just, you know, do us a solid, folks. Uh, also, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues uh, YouTube channel. We're creeping slowly toward 900. We appreciate the support, so thanks so much for that. Um, Check out uh, Paul's writing on the uh, the Toffee Blues website. Uh, he's got some analysis on there. Uh, every once in a while, he drops the knowledge. Uh, check it out. All right. Yeah, I'm hip. I'm with it. <laughs> I went all Dr. Evil. Sorry. <laughs> Comedy nerds. <laughs> uh. Also, speaking of the Toffee Blues website, just check out the website. There's a lot of analysis, all things Everton on there. Check it out. There's analysis by other contributors that come on our YouTube channel as well. You'll recognize people like Max on there, Tom. Lastly, check out the Toffee Blues on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm done plugging. No more. All right? Uh, Paul, thank you very much. I appreciate your time, man. No problem, dude. So, bye. Bye.